Uh, first item on tonight, no, oh, thank you for all being here tonight. First item on tonight's work session agenda will be a discussion on the Fair Oak Dock Slip and Marina Basin Dredging. Mr. Richard Johnson, uh, Public Works Director, and also Mr. Drew Craze, our Marina Manager. Hello. Hello. You all take those and pass them around. I'm not sure if you've got it in your electronic package or not. Some folks like the papers. I kind of got a, a, a two-part answer to a uh, inquiry and question. Uh, the first part is, is, is as we desire to make improvements at Fairhope Docks, what does it take for us to be able to get permitted to do slip and basin dredging? And I've put together on this packet kind of a, a summary of findings, and I'm going to try to kind of give you the Reader's Digest version. First of all, the actual maintenance dredging uh, for the basins and the slips is uh, a very good news answer to the question. It is done via a uh, Corps of Engineers nationwide 35 permit. And it's a unique permit in the sense is that it's one self-certifying, meaning that you don't mail it in, you don't wait for the Corps to come back and give you a permit. Uh, it's non-reporting and in the sense is that uh, we just have to obey all the rules that are laid out in it and as long as we do that we're in compliance with that permit we do have to meet all the general conditions of the Corps of Engineers for nationwide permits we're not going to sit around and have to wait for a pre-construction notice or a letter of authorization from the Corps and basically it allows for you to dredge to a, what they either call a uh, controlling depth for ingress and egress which that would be our benchmark meaning that we can take our slips and basins down to the previously dredged depth of the channel that comes into the marina so it, it, it and, and that makes common sense in the sense is that that as long as you can accommodate the biggest boat that can come in the harbor uh, you should be able <clears throat> to dredge to a depth to accommodate that and right now the yacht club is almost completing a permit which we'll discuss in a minute uh, for that channel dredging to a minus eight feet below mean low low water level uh, there is also some strings attached. Uh, the Alabama Coastal Area Management Program uh, is applicable. That is administrated through ADM and the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. And just to kind of give you an idea, the, the Nationwide 35 uh, basically has a couple of, of key tenant rules. One, dredge material shall be placed in upland disposal area and properly contained to prevent re-entering the waterways or wetlands unless specifically authorized by other approved permits and exemptions. So basically, if you take the material out, you got to take it to an up deep water, take it to an upland, and it can't be reintroduced to waters of the U.S. And there's also the issue with the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resource that you have to make sure that you coordinate with that. So then the question is, what do we do with the material that comes out if we pursue this? We've got really two options to pursue. One is we can dewater and landfill. Uh, here is the thing that, that is interesting that we don't have a definite answer on. Uh, state lands uh, considers that material state land. Okay, So if you take it and put it somewhere else that's not state land, then you have to pay for it. And historically they have at times charged as much as $2.50 a cubic yard for the enjoyment of that mud that came out of the basin. Uh, in the contract to do this work, either we would have to include the haul cost uh, in, in the contract or we could self-perform with public works equipment and haul it to our landfill. Uh, the good news is that material would probably make very suitable cover for landfill cover, so it has a use, it has a purpose. The other uh, opportunity, and our friends at the Yacht Club are, are pursuing this opportunity uh, as part of their uh, channel permit, is to seek what's called a general permit to uh, uh, to basically do a living shoreline improvement on the beach that we have there on the west side of Fairhope Docks. Uh, if we could take the dredge poles, we could dewater and de theoretically deposit on the beach and build up that shoreline there and keep that material in the bay system. Historically, Again, state lands have considered moving of that material to be a state lands controlled issue, and at times they have 
uh, opted to charge for the pleasure of moving the material around mechanically, and uh, and there is some historical uh, presence of uh, uh, precedence of a dollar twenty-five cubic yard to do that. The only challenge is if that material that comes out of the basins and the slips is deemed unsuitable, meaning it has too much fines, too much discoloration, too much uh, silts and muck in it. There's a chance they'd say no. The the, the general ten permit in, in is must have a clean sandy material that goes out. A lot of times you can dewater it, let it weather a little bit, and some of that uh, condition will improve. But it, it would be it would be condition, conditional upon the material that comes out of the basins and the slips. And uh, to be able to pursue that permit, you have to be compliant with the general ten requirements, which I included for you. So what is the uh, kind of the bottom line? I have included there on your on uh, on page four, kind of conceptual. This is just a conceptual area, um, and uh, and and that would really be be determined once the channel is located, and and you know so that that. But <clears throat> just if we just took this area, and if we assumed that there would be an average of two foot of material across that complete area removed, in the green area you're looking at somewhere towards six thousand cubic yards and in the uh, in the blue area about 25 and that could be more or less depending upon where the channel is and and, and making sure you have uh, you know free board to move back and forth say so, the number again Richard six thousand cubic yards and what was the other yeah let me get my my clear picture so I can actually that was read the, it the green and then the blue was the green is calculated on this drawing as uh, 5490 cubic yards in the green and 21 and 54 cubic yards in the blue. And yeah, that's really a plus or minus number because the assumption is two foot of material removal uniform across. And I don't know, I can't really tell you without soundings whether that's a good assumption or a bad assumption. Do you have those soundings? We have some from a couple of years ago. I do not have possession of those. It would be a, a good thing to have. No, I do not. I'll try to dig those up. Uh -oh. That would give us a better way to look at yeah, what that surface yeah. is. And, and Drew and I talked about we would probably not want to be real aggressive dredging right up against the bulkheads uh, just for concern of potential undermining. So, uh, you know, kind of scalloping uh, that uh, profile up against so that you, you're not taking four foot of material from the toe of a bulkhead uh, that may be not in the best condition. So uh, the bottom line, and just as a conclusion, is we really <coughs> – do we have the horsepower on staff to pursue the 35? Yes, because it's pretty straightforward. Um, uh, but then again, I understand that is just the permitting process. We still have to put together a, a bid package that goes out on the streets to those contractors that do this type of work and manage that project. Um, General 10 is a little more complicated. That's, that, that is winning some arguments and some design considerations and then we could do all that and and the first uh, material that comes out is deemed unacceptable then we're, we're back to to our original um, uh, program some uh, there are companies that that do this type of stuff as, as kind of a specialty environmental permitting uh, I will tell you that if we could put an RFQ out for, for a, a package that gets us permitted and designs the, the specifications to put on the streets for a dredging contractor, and if that is not to exceed $5,000, that may be a good value to us uh, because uh, there's two components in this. There's time, and, and I will tell you, I think if, if we started tomorrow, the the before we had everything in place where we could get it out in the streets and actually have anything happening, you're looking at a year process uh, on, especially if we've got to uh, establish a general 10 and do all the, the requirements for that. Uh, and again, if we pursue uh, spoiling that material onto our beach there and it's deemed not to be quality enough to do that, then we're, we're back to hauling and disposing, which is not real problematic because we're set up to do that type of work we move material all the time we have a landfill that we can put it in and, and put it to good use and we can argue with state lands at the appropriate time whether it's appropriate for them to charge us for that pleasure so that is that is where we are really looking for some guidance i know drew at least wants to get the process started so that we can start looking at because regardless of how we choose in the future to reconfigure slips or piers or even replace bulkheads, 
the area of dredging still has to occur. I mean, and so, and, and right now, if we are losing business or we are having times when it's difficult for our potential customers or our current customers to get their crafts in and out because of shoaled material and things of that nature, it, it's something that need to be done. And kind of rolling over into our, our the next folks are, that I want to introduce you to and let you know what they're up to is the Yacht Club is rapidly pursuing a permit to get the channel cleaned up, so it's going to make our lovely Fly Creek area much more accessible to craft, so we want to make sure our marina is equally accessible as well. And uh, that's kind of where we are and what it takes to get to a point where we can get a bid package out to a dredging contractor to contract. Nice thing is, once we get it all set up, it's good for five years, no matter what combination of permits we have to get. So we can break this dredge area into smaller and smaller components, and we can dredge, you know, uh, however much our budget can stand in a given time period. And the nice thing is, once you get the permits in place, you can renew them, uh, and it's not nearly as much work. Any questions concerning Fairhope docks and, and uh, dredging of the slips and the basins? Every question. I may have missed this, but the uh, looking at the conceptual area, you've got the green section, the blue section. Are those different depths, or are we, are those different phases? Or well, is there a reason for those being? Just looking different? at the plans for the channel dredging, I, I don't know if it does a lot of good to dredge the blue area if the <coughs> area that accesses it is not as deep. Does that make sense? So that was why I was thinking that as as the yacht club successfully goes to their phasing and and and, and you know and, our, and we participate or however that works that was just the only reason for splitting that up and there may be uh, you know drew will ultimately be the advisor of what what order operations do here i was just trying to give you magnitudes or at least something to look at so and i'd, I'd just say personally i'd be in favor of doing the five thousand if that would expedite the process and <coughs> think getting this wrapped up and completed would be um, would be beneficial on this, this this area this primary. well the good news is there's no cost to asking the question meaning that we can get the rfq out on the streets at no cost to anybody that's just you know just in-house labor and we can get you back to where we can define that and if it's not an acceptable amount then we can go back to plan uh b and 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 work it in-house and, and make it happen that way. I, I, I think I would rather know the answer and then decide whether you want to agree to uh, the answer to that question uh, at that time and, and um, be glad to, to get that RFQ out there and, and get some respondents back on it. Questions, Robert? No. Kevin? I've got a couple. <clears throat> uh, back to the spoils. Mm -hmm. Once you pull it out, that's when it's deemed whether it's suitable or unsuitable, whether we put it on the beach or put it pull it out and after it's dewatered so it's has gotten to a it, somewhat of a drive whether or not it's, it's the state does this yeah they're gonna they're gonna make the ultimate decision, decision. yes and if it's not suitable we have to we theoretically may have to pay them to put this somewhere well what they're gonna probably say is that you're gonna have to dispose it in the upland area and the, the logical location is our landfill because we can use it and we know it's isolated from waters is that considered state land? Is that our property? no because that's why they want us to pay for it because the basically they're saying the spoils is the state that's land their, and, and that they're their land um, but you have to put it on state lands if you had st st spoils and put them on found state lands say the five rivers which is state land or the, or the island out in the bay if yeah you that's a great question there, you wouldn't have to pay anything is that correct i and logic would tell me that that is correct, but uh, state land sometimes does not uh, no, necessarily I, follow no, logic. But, so but the, my biggest question is: Is there any way to do soil samples in there to tell us whether or not it'd be suitable or not prior to taking it out of the ground? Because basically, if you take it out of the ground, you got to put it somewhere to be dewatered and sit around till it filters out. Roughly, is what you're doing. <clears throat> yes, sir. And then they're going to decide whether or not it is. And if it isn't, you're going to have to haul it from that point to wherever and yes, either sir. cost or no cost yes sir so if you could determine whether or not by soil samples if it was suitable could be you know take the sample out and then do the little bit of deordering there i mean i'm not gonna charge you much for a sample well I, you know i think that's uh, the, the, i don't think they would have any objection if you did you know and then uh, we mechanically can find out excavate prior, a as we're few yards RFQ, and let it dry we could have so. an answer to that uh, as far as what it's going to cost should we find out it's not deemed suitable i mean in essence it's kind of a 
the state's going to determine whether it's suitable or not. The state's the one's going to get paid if it's not suitable, and they make money. Well, yes, sir. If I was with the state, I know what I'd be doing, unless it's clear sand. Yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I, you you've mucked around there more than I have. I don't know what really what to anticipate. I mean, uh, it, it somewhat defies logic, in my opinion, is that if if you put even a silty sand on the beach within a day or two, it's not going to be silty sand anymore. It, 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 there's already silts in the bay system, it, and they settle out and, and do their thing. But uh, again, it will be one of those things is that the, the, the requirements of the permits and the, and right. the jurisdiction are going to make just, those final I was just thinking it would be a lot simpler if we could do and find out through soil samples, if you could find out determine prior to dredging out, if it's suitable, would be deemed suitable or unsuitable. Yeah, I'd be glad to inquire if we, if, if that one would allow us to do a couple samples, put them up, and have them come in and at least give us some guidance there if they yeah. think that, yeah, that looks good. No, it doesn't. So uh, I don't I mean, think that's you know, a hard hard thing to do. No, sir. Getting the RFQ started, that's, you know, probably need, we absolutely need to be doing that. Okay. See what we are getting into. Yes, sir. Councilman Robinson, Mayor, any questions? No. All right, kind of a, as a quick segue, um, we have uh, Mr. Ollinger, who is the chairman of the board of the Mobile Yacht Club, and he has with him uh, Tom Hutchinson, who's with Eco Solution. The uh, Yacht Club has been through this process. Uh, they have uh, done nationwide 35s for their basins and slips, but they have taken on a, a pretty much bigger permitting process, an individual permit to get approved to dredge the channel. And uh, I've included that in the back of the handout that I gave you so you can kind of see the work that's been involved in that. It is in the final review process with the Corps of Engineers. They've been at it for about a year, um, and they're looking forward to getting uh, the, the clearance and go ahead on that. Um, kind of being neighbors and, uh, and having some mutual interest here, um, they have uh, kind of approached the staff here about uh, the ability to uh, entertain some cost sharing. Uh, they've done a lot of the heavy lifting as far as the permitting design and all that and uh, they're planning to phase the channel uh, work and uh, they would uh, kind of like to at least let you know what they have done to this point in time and, and are seeking some support from the council um, not only in getting the channel dredged but hopefully help sharing some of the cost of that dredging and I, th I think I can't speak for Drew but but, but realizing that, that we're dependent upon that channel for the success of Fairhope Docks and, and we have a, a, you know, a good shared frontage on it, uh, that it's in our mutual interest to have a good, clean, dredged uh, channel for the ingress and egress of the watercrafts that, that come through there. But uh, if, if it's so appropriate, Mr. Uh, Chairman is, is allow Mr. Ollinger and sure. uh, his consultant to kind of share what they're doing and, and it would be my recommendation that they made a formal request that y'all would at least consider participating in uh, the completion of their channel dredge. Thanks for committing us to that. I, I said it's just my <laughs> recommendation. I like it. Richard, thank you. Can, can come up to the mic so we can get that recorded, Alice, if you don't mind. With, I'm the chairman of the Board of Governors of the Fairhope Yacht Club, and um, as Richard pretty much has summarized, we have, we're on the uh, cusp of what we think receiving a five-year permit to dredge from the bulkhead all the way out 1,650 feet uh, permit, and, uh, and it has taken almost a year. So um, if you have any questions about it, we... You know I'm here to answer that but that's the I don't have quite the specifics or we probably do between Tom yeah. Hutchins who's helped us with this with eco solutions and uh, John Adams who's also been involved in this he is the uh, harbor chairman of the Ferrip Yacht Club for the last three or four years and one thing I would like to mention also is that Ferrip Yacht Club at its own expense did a maintenance dredging last year for 15,000 otherwise we probably could have walked across Fly Creek uh, the mouth of Fly Creek um, <laughs> this winter in some of these storms. So uh, that's where we are. We feel like, uh, like Richard stated, it is pertinent to everyone on that creek, the city, the residents, anyone who has any interest in the creek to keep the channel dredged. Otherwise, it will just be a sandbar in the next five years and no one will be able to get in and out of. So um, we come to you, uh, you know, to request a partnership in doing this and, uh, and look forward to you know, working with you in the future, hopefully, if, if you guys are amenable to doing that. Mr. Ollinger, uh, what I was asking you earlier was, do you have a copy of those soundings that were made a couple of years ago, or do, or do you have some more recent soundings? 
Tom, do those exist? Okay. And they're more recent. Is it possible for you to provide them to Absolutely. Richard just so he can, so that he knows that his estimates of how much, I mean, cubic yards of silt may need to be removed? Oh, okay. Because it's just the federal channel. Okay. Well, I'll look then. I know we had some made that went all the way through our channel and then all the way up Fly it goes, Creek. It goes, it goes up to almost where the dry storage is and there's a turning basin. Yeah. And that's pretty much the extent of the federal. That helped help in that, those green areas, uh, as we right. the green cross hatched areas. Okay. Excellent. And, and we are obtaining a permit to do the entire 1650 the first 300 feet and 5,000 cubic yards is the most important because that is where the shoal traditionally is. If you can't get out there, then it, if you can't get through there in or out, that's obviously, that is where it shoals in the most, which is right at the jetties. Yeah. So that was going, that was my next question. Uh, I mean, it's been talked about for years, you know, doing something with the jetty you know, you hear south winds do this, north winds do this, and, and everything moves around depending on the season of the year. But, um, you know, at some point in time, we need to look at some kind of engineered effort to prevent the constant filling. And there are some people that say it's coming from upstream. A lot of people say it's coming from the bay. But something could be done at least about the silt that's coming from the bay. So does your scope of work include anything like that? No, we, we do have, as Richard had mentioned, a permit to, to put 5,000 cubic yards on the Fairhope Yacht Club property as a living shoreline. But other than that, there's, there's no other, and Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, or John, but we have no other <coughs> permit to do anything like that. Tom, am I correct in that, you know, if we wanted to look long term and to prevent the constant silting of the harbor, there could be, it may be, may be cost prohibitive, mm -hmm. but something. You're talking about extension of the jetty. Extension of the jetty. You know, I've seen commas going this way, and I've seen them going that way, and different people will tell you that they should bend this way or that way. Yeah, yeah, I think there could be an improvement over what you have, for sure. And the reason I bring that up and for council is that if we're going to, you know, uh, put out an RFQ for a study, did we want to include uh, an RFQ that might address something like that as well? You know, we don't have to accept recommendations of, from these engineers, but it might we might want to include it so we know what it would take to to do that. I have never heard it at all. That makes sense. It, it would increase the scope of work some. You know, the RFQ would change. It would make it a little more expensive, but I don't I don't think that they're, you know, building the Apollo spacecraft. It's uh, rocks and people that know how the, the motion of the tides work probably can figure that out pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, this is a problem that will rear itself every four to five years. And it makes well, sense in the long, long term, can, 50, 60, 70 years, yeah. it, it would definitely pay for itself if you don't have to dredge every five years. I believe you all have an engineer on contract, don't you? Coastal engineer. Uh, Richard, you're shaking your head today. I got somebody going, no, it's somebody going, yeah. Well, he's technically not on contract, but, uh, but you know, Dr. Douglas definitely is one that's willing. He's on the harbor board, but he's not on the contract. Hang, hang I got a gentleman. Paid a great can you, can you answer that question? I think I was going to ask what you guys for you, if I may, talking about that. Have you considered doing what they're doing in the other states around here, where they're put, they're collecting the Christmas trees and putting them on the uh, harbors, on the shorelines each year, and building them up, and that's trapping the sand on the one side where it's coming down. And uh, you know you've got free disposal. You got you get you collect all these Christmas trees each year. What do you do with them? So it might be worth someone looking into yeah. what's going on in the other state. And I think it's Louisiana that's doing it, yeah. and they've been doing it for many years now. And they've got the yeah. you know they've got it all set up there. They've just put the piers down the side and right. take the trucks <coughs> in and drop the uh, Christmas trees. Well, I, I, trees I guess the answer there. to that was no. That's not being considered because the RFQ would be looking for, you know, suggestions like like that. Right. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Is there anything else we need to add? Do you guys have any other questions about it? Well, she said y'all did a maintenance dredge last year. Yes. And when? What was the last time before that that? 
the, the Corps of Engineers routinely did this, and that, that's why we're having this issue. And I would say it was every five years, and Tom, you correct me, but I would think it's about every five years they would come and do it. So we're probably seven years since they've done it. So we came in, like I said, last year and had to do this maintenance just to make it as navigable as it is now because, the, because of the, the, the hump that was there. And they did it for us too. But now that they're they're not anymore, it's better to plan together so we can maybe save money. Council comments. Jimmy gave an opinion on the RFQ. Anybody else have an opinion on that? Get it. I I I think. I, I, Sometimes you got to be careful what you ask for, but I think the RFQ should be expanded to a study of the jetty. One thing I would like to, for, for the council to consider besides, or to take into consideration besides the partnering is that time is of the essence. If we get this permit, we could get it next week. It's five years. Plus, I don't know how much longer that channel can go without dredging because it's when you go out there now sometimes on a you're hitting three feet and when you talk about the great loopers or any of these other boats that come in for whatever reason out of towners recreational it's problematic now if we go through another fall and winter season it's it's going to be almost except for a center console you're just about not going to be able to get in and out well I, I, you know Fair Oak Yacht Club is a private club but I'll ask the question you don't have to answer it do you care to share with us the, what the estimated cost is yeah. for this for the for five for the immediate 5,000 most needed cubic yards a hundred thousand or under I'm sorry a hundred thousand dollars okay. to do and that would be from the jetties out to 300 feet 80 feet wide but that's the most immediate need once you get out beyond to the 300 feet you don't have to dredge quite as much because you get deeper and the water's obviously a, um, it's deeper, so, but that is the most immediate. If that was 5,000 cubic yards? Yes. Okay, so if you went out 1,600 feet and you got roughly five times that, that's half a million total. Well, the, the entire, the, the, the permit is for 1,850, 18,000, because as you get further out, you don't need yeah you, okay. you don't need to dredge as much you. so to give you a scope this is almost a third or a half of the job mm, to keep it to keep it at eight feet because by the time you get out 1650 you're already naturally at about six feet so naturally where we're talking about you're going to be two to three feet if you did nothing so that's where you go to eight and then you have to work your way out is that correct okay So in the core used to come in and do eight from that number two mark, the furthest west all the way in. And is it safe to say that the cost would be similar, uh, probably, Mr. Johnson, in the basin as it would be in that most critical 300 feet, probably would have at least that much silt? Or, or because of prior dredging, maybe, maybe not. I think the unit cost may be a little less per cubic yard because of the distance of hauling spools watering right there in the mm -hmm. gravel area immediately adjacent to uh, the slips uh, but I think for a budgetary purposes yeah you probably could use that yeah because you gave me the number roughly it was about 8,000 yards probably like 160,000 yeah mm -hmm. yeah let us kick these numbers around a little bit um, I, I would just I would I would say now with no promise to you because I can't speak for these these other four gentlemen here is that you know I, I think that I'd like to see some partnership I, I think it's fair now I, I would also you know I would like to bring in the residents of the area they over the years you know that many of them have said that they would willingly you know uh, pitch in I, I don't know how much that would mean but you know every little bit would help and they, there there are people along that the creek and the bay there they're that are, that are willing to, to help yeah. Okay. I did talk to Fly Creek Marina. Of course, this was has been a year now, and um, 
wanted to see what their idea would be to contribute to this as well. They said they didn't have as much of a dredging problem, but I think it is something that we can all well, look and see what they're sharing. They have to have access, right? <laughs> can we put a toll bridge I across there? Well, that's <laughs> agreed. That, I mean, I, I didn't think, say that. But you know, I was just saying that you know, <laughs> there is another partner <laughs> that can be engaged, and I did talk to them last year, so. Yeah, and that's you know I think what it. they need to realize is if we all collectively do nothing it's going to look exactly. like the mouth of Rock Creek it, mm -hmm. yes so um, and how to how to bring them to the table obviously is something that we can continue we, to we definitely need to try sure I mean, they, they, they have as much to right. gain as anyone and it's only fair to ask and I guess you know if they say no like you know it's kind of like you guys if we sit here and say no to you you know, then you're kind of stuck, but that's not the that's not the right thing to do. I don't think. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Any yes. other questions? Thank you. We're good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Discussion for transmission upgrades from wastewater department, Mr. Peterson. Good afternoon. Hello? And I think this started with my request to uh, get requests for qualifications out on the street for some division of what we might need to do with transmission upgrades from the plant. Basically, there's there's three outfall systems that, that come to the plant. You know, one is along Church Street from the plant to Fells Avenue. The other is from the plant going out to north section follows by you to uh, Fairwood and then Fairwood to Fair Oak Avenue and then up to Ingleside and then the third one is from north section street at the plant going north to the top of the hill where the school is so those are the three outfalls I think the two most critical ones would probably be the the church street outfall and the the, the Fairwood Fair Oak Avenue outfall but to get qualifications, you know, and uh, uh, describe a project that would validate some of the information we had in the study, you know, we may want to do some pump test at the lift station and monitor some of the flows that we get during dry weather flows and then wet weather flows and make sure that capacity is adequate for some level of growth that would probably be in the next 10 or 15 year projection cycle. Questions for Mr. Peterson? Any questions? No, uh, I thought somebody was going to ask me how we're going to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll I know, ask I know question. that's your that, I know that's your job, and I wouldn't want to take that away from you. Yeah, but uh, you know, the, I had proposed earlier that we look at some revenue enhancement uh, from both connection fees and, and rate increases and and looked at the possibility of some type of barred money whether that be a revenue bond scenario whether that be I think y'all had mentioned one time preferring to borrow money from local banks and and that part doesn't matter to me one way or another I do know that interest rates do seem to want to creep up a little bit you know that when I first proposed this back in what late March early April of last year they were pretty much at an all-time low or, or at least in, in my lifetime maybe and I thought that was the the best reason to try to approach mm -hmm. that type of funding then and of course the one thing that I did request in that plan it was based on a three-year spending plan it wasn't based on a one-year spending plan I think there may have been some confusion with that and uh, the rate increases were, were there were two options for water and sewer the reason I wanted to go with the higher option at that time was because when you start to do the rehabilitation work on the sewer system you, you can find things that you can spend a lot of money on pretty quick and and it would be better to have a little bit of cash available for those purposes and you know but but the, the rate increase in general for for and and, and this capital spending plan I proposed was for both you know electric gas water and wastewater and 
rate increases predicated on the, the percentage of each of those utilities participation in, in, in the proceeds we would get from the bonds. And then the total rate increase was about four and a half percent. And and when you look at that I think and there was a, some talking points that I had offered the mayor back during this budget cycle that, you know, each each utility had a cap. I mean it was all based on adding a little bit of incremental cost to to the base charge and then, and then a little bit of cost to the usage up to a point and then after that it flattened out so there was a cap on every single increase that we proposed and that, I, th I think that's still a good plan I think it's still a viable plan well they're not going nowhere uh, it's 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 uh, I know that uh, councilman Brown has studied those numbers um, in fact all of those utility numbers and I have studied all of those utility numbers and, and I think it's just a, a matter of uh, he and I getting together here real soon and trying to come up with um, what we feel might be fair to everyone knowing that we have needs and then coming and talking to you one final time and saying this I, I, I think it could be done before the next council meeting even and maybe even have it on the agenda at the next council meeting with a 33 agenda item tonight and uh, oh, the other session and, and work session, it, it, it was just nearly impossible to get through all those items. Right. Is, that, is that fair to say? Yeah, um, but even, I mean, even on top of that, I mean, the capital, some of these projects aren't hinged on rate increases. I mean, yeah. Jack's identified and, and Chuck Zunt with the Financial Advisory Committee has identified other means yeah, of we, funding. Yeah, we may have so. some cash reserves, and I don't doubt that yeah. a bit. But when, when you borrow money, the, the more money you have, you, you tend to get a better rate from that. Is, is that a fair statement, Jim? Well, that's a fair statement. I think the city would and, and qualify for a pretty good rate. As, whether we deplete all our reserves or not? Well, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know that we ever have to borrow. I mean, I really don't know that we have to borrow money. I, I mean, we may be able to do it without well, borrowing money. And that's we'll, kind of when what we, we start do. to get these projects in place, <laughs> we'll find out. But yeah. That's what we've been asking. That's what we've been asking. Bring us specific projects. Don't, don't come say we need $21 million to do all the gas all the electric, all the sewer. We need to quit talking about the financing. We'll handle the financing. Bring us a specific proposal for a lift station upgrade, for lining more sewer pipe, whatever it needs to be to keep the stuff in the right pipe. We have not turned down the first project. We have not, we have not said anything about it. We, we continue to ask, bring us the projects. Jimmy, have, have we? Uh, yeah, and I did. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what we just are. Just I mean, why clear. would he not bonds? I mean, he has sent them. Just be clear. when He has sent what? He has sent the proposals, and we put together. When, when we sent the, the original proposal, the request was we'll paint the tank first. And, and we've done that. And, and we've done that really in what I would consider the, uh, not really the highest priority first. But if we're going to do that and we're going to go down Church Street, there's stormwater systems that need to be repaired. There's cast iron gas mains that need to be done. And there's going to be potentially some water systems that need to be upgraded for fire protection requirements. And obviously the sewer transmission. And, and I can't quantify that value now. But, and I don't know that if we're going to get a line of credit, then we can get a line of credit. And I feel good about working with that. If, if you just say, tell us what we're going to spend and we're going to get the money, I don't know that I feel that comfortable putting together a project without knowing the money is in place ahead of time. Would you feel all right if we gave you a number and said this is what you have? Well, I, I mean, I've given y'all a number. Can you right. tell me that much money is available yeah. within the next three years? If you can, I don't have any problems. I think, it, but, but I, I, think I, I think I think it can be to give you that. That's, I a, think that's a hard that's a hard question to answer. But yeah, I think the answer is. Well, you know, I, yes. In all honesty, between Bard and what we can come up with our own, I don't think it's going to be that difficult to come up with the. And we're referring to the twenty million dollar number. Yes. Yeah, I got it. I got to see that number justified though. Twenty million. Well, I'm just saying we got to start. With, we got in essence we got to start somewhere with something. So what? Let's just use this number. It doesn't mean we're going to spend. It's just like the budget. It doesn't mean you're going to get. It's going to get spent. But it's start, start, and, something you know, to start and, with that we can use. And then we'll go back to the electric. I don't see. Place. Yeah, I don't see an issue. We had a per negotiated se. contract in place. What in August or September, and 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 we tried to get it on the agenda a couple of times, and it's and it's not 
progressed. What I asked for on that was I said, give me a plan of how we're going to pay for it. Give me a proposal. And, and then the budget, we, we borrowing the money. put together a, a budget that had $4 million the first year, $3 million the second year, $2 million the third year. But how are we going to fund that? But that's bit? what you just told him is tell him what you need. Y'all will figure out how to fund it. The, the thing is, is if we want to, and we can put together all the communication we've had on this for the last year, we've had sit down meetings. We've gone over every utility infrastructure in detail. And we've talked about it in, in open meetings. So it's, he, he went to the effort of showing how it can be paid in the budget. And I said during my presentation that we have reserves that and with the profit now that utilities will make without the subsidy to the city i felt like we wouldn't have to borrow any money i said that in september so i mean i don't want us to finger point anymore i just want us to make this a priority and say here's the plan next week we're going to get started you know there's no um there's been no effort to, to, to stop that, Richard. I just think, you know, it's a, we just need to talk. You well, maybe, call I, me every maybe day. I've misread the, 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 the discussions that we've had about it, but I, I mean, when, when you say we're not going to, when you take the capital spending out of the budget, it doesn't tell me that we feel good about spending the money. Out the budget? Yeah, you took yeah, we took the capital, capital and yeah. yeah. Well, but it was that was due to the mayor's suggestion. No, to take that, that was right? and back in September. Advisory right? committee. Yeah. Yeah. So we could get it approved, but y'all no, so y'all we kept it for four months. I figured we could make a decision in four months. Recommended to in order to get the budget passed in October November right. time frame, let's take it out of the well, budget. I'm, I'm but instead, we went when it got to us to January to pass it. No, it, it was in. Yeah. Well, you could have put it back in. It was absolutely in. Nothing was taken out. You could have put it back in. Right. <laughs> we could have okay. some, some details, yeah. So anyway, that, that's where we are. We, we had unfortunate uh, occurrences with overflows, and nobody regrets those more than I do. And I've got a few pictures just to show you. The, the first picture here is actually a manhole that I found while riding a bike Sunday about three weeks ago around the homestead village area and if you look closely you'll see the riser ring on that manhole has been pried up off of the base of the manhole and there's been a rock placed underneath it in the low spot where all the water from that lot drains <laughs> back into the sewer and, and i'm showing you that because as we get more aggressive with our evaluation and assessment of the sewer system we're going to need to have some legal ability to possibly repair clean out on private property or to have private homeowners repair their laterals that we find are creating problems for us and that can I mean I think it can be done I, I think we can use letters and, and we can perhaps put liens on property to give them time frames and, and deadlines, and then we can have uh, plumbers on call that can do that if those times elapse and they're not able to fulfill their obligation to fix their laterals. But these are the kind of things we're going to find. One of the pictures is, is a broken clean out in the yard. It's the last picture of the, and where these clean outs are broken, any water that happens to get there go straight into the sewer i remember when you were originally hired i i told you to write us up an ordinance that fines people for for these broken clean out lines and we'll pass it yesterday and and so that we know that that's common all over <laughs> maintenance guys hit them knock off clean out drains and public, all over the a, city a public awareness program would be yeah. appropriate to well you give them some time to get it cleaned up yeah and some warnings but uh, give me an example so now this <laughs> This manhole cover that you found. Yes. All right. So what? Uh, what we fixed it. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. So you see this, you fix it, right? Yes. And yeah, that doesn't have to. That doesn't. That doesn't have to come before the council. That's a. 
Well, now, I'm just trying to point out what, why, when it rains, we get so much water in the system. We know it's freshwater influx for right. the most part. Yeah. And then we know that the clean out lines are done. We talked about that at a work session oh, God, at least a year ago. Um, so and I'll have to go back and look. It seemed like I did make some efforts to put some sewer use ordinance in place. and. And I don't know that I communicated those with everybody, but I think I did make some yeah. communications about that. And, and where it's gone, I don't well, know. See, I, I, you know, when we find things like this, it makes me wonder about the collection system studies that we have. You know, how inadequate is the collection system versus how many hundreds of thousands of gallons of water can flow? I mean, this, well, is, this is unbelievable. I agree. I mean, that is, I mean, that, and it's a low spot. I mean, that's and, and don't that like one spot's could be thousands of gallons. I agree. And well, the shame of it is everybody has a problem with sewer going into the bay or wherever right. Oversfields are, yet this is this is not naturally done. This is done on purpose to drain this lot. That's the contention that but I made. It doesn't I seem, well, I mean, there's no, <laughs> there's no way a rock crawled up out of there or it floated the lid up off of that thing. Five good men couldn't pick that up. I've done this. It, so somebody had to do it on purpose yeah. for a particular reason, which would be to drain the property. And, and, and the and, fines can and, be As we have discussed, like I'd that. like to see that uh, fine particular I guarantee you, if you craft it, we'll pass it. Okay. Well, that's what, I'm just letting you know what we're looking at. And the other ordinances that we talked about, too, for them to review for fees and mm -hmm. things yeah, like no, that. Yeah, we, no, you know, some of the ordinances on connection fees and... Uh, or you st uh, I think at one time you said you'd be open to connection fee increases. Is that no, that's all been being looked at. Every 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 one of those fees. Okay. Well, I mean, I've I've, I've well, crafted a lot, of, quite a bit of that, and some of the correspondence. Is, Robert, are you working on that? I mean, you know, and I don't. It, it, I've got a lot to do every day, that is and and, and <clears throat> I appreciate any interest y'all want to have in that. But uh, I did work on. The connection fee and the some of the uh, yep. for the water, yep. rate increases for yep. the water. Every bit of it. We're yep. looking at every, every one of them. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, we're literally looking at every single one of them right now. So are there specific problems you have with I that? I can't give you a specific right now without having to pick through there. And, and you know, I hadn't picked it up in a week, but, you know, it would take me an hour to refresh myself on that. Okay. And what about the personnel? Well, I think we, we have three new personnel, and the camera for the video assessment of the main lines will be on the agenda tonight. Uh, depending on how aggressive we want to get, this, this crew will be able to assess, and they'll have to stop that assessment, and they'll have to fix what they find for critical issues like something like that manhole there. But, you know, if we want to be very aggressive, we can perhaps hire two more people and have them fixing the things that these assessment crews find along the way and that, that can accelerate what we do with the rehabilitation work if you're interested in that. So I don't want to give an answer in a work session on that but I hear you. And, and you know what, what, if in fact we do get the camera we're still looking at 10 or 12 weeks out we'd still like to get the mapping system up to date so we can use it as an asset management tool when we do this work modeling the systems are still you know something that i think we need to do i think we need to hire another engineer and have an engineer staff set up you know just it just takes that kind of effort to to not only maintain what we have but to continue <coughs> to allow the system to grow otherwise you know we're looking at how long this is going to take and whether or not we can even accept any other additional capacity. Mm -hmm. um, I think too it's important to say that you know as a city that owns all of our utilities municipalities and businesses that are in the same circumstance have that experience on <coughs> staff and it would definitely be the best time to do it with all of the things we have ahead and infrastructure needs. I just can't emphasize Best time enough to, do what now? to to have a team like that, that experience in house, where we can. I mean, we're going to spend far less on that than we have been annually on contracting out all of these um, engineering expenses. 
and they would not just work for all of the utilities they can help um, in public works <coughs> as well and and I did prepare a request for qualifications for the natural gas system for the financial advisory committee thinking that, that, that we'll take the little steps about identifying the high consequence areas and looking at maybe scheduling cast iron replacement uh, some of that you know should be able to be done concurrently with the, the water wastewater and and perhaps even underground power in places and certainly stormwater I mean, it's, it's just when you start getting into infrastructure improvements it, it, it's a time-consuming cost sensitive effort and and you just need to know that and, and the money the decisions need to be made day to day and it's, it, it takes an effort and we, we have a lot of great operators that care a lot about the system and having support to those people would would I think boost morale and offer you know some a little bit of hope in terms of trying to quit treating this like a triage center where we're just putting band-aids over the, the bleeding and, and actually start to repair the wounds. And I know I don't mean to sound like... Well, it sounds a little bit like you, you're saying we don't care about the employees or the people like this. That's what it sounds a little <coughs> I like. No, that's, that's I think not. it's, I it's more about we yeah, just I don't want to exactly wait any longer. I mean, I think it's just it's time to move forward. I think that's... So, so help me understand, what what is the next step to... Moving forward. To, to moving forward with fixing whether a sewer or a transformer well, or a gas camera, line or water main or whatever well, it is. The, the we just give you a, a big check. The electrical engineer is, is, has been on the table since September to get that project started. On what table? On the table of Deborah's desk and on the table of Michael's now that we found it and, and Lisa now is perhaps put it on the agenda or perhaps not it's on the agenda. so it's on the agenda tonight but it was delayed and I don't know why it's delayed and this is why and I want everybody to, to see that is just and this is for the benefit of the council too is just to have a running list so we can just review things that are upcoming you know and we can see the things that are coming up so maybe if there's a second step that hasn't been done that that list will be available now. It might not necessarily make it to the work session or the agenda, but at least it's a list of things that we're working on. I think it's important for all council to see that. Richard, if you were to start on that, the whole collective picture you'd mentioned, 20, 21 million in upgrades, if you were to start tomorrow, how long would a project like that take? And I, mean, I know different ones I was would hoping last we longer. could be aggressive with that and do it in three years. That would eliminate the cast iron gas main. Now, and keep in mind, I mean, part of what the other part of this thing we're doing is we're, we're looking at uh, the, the metering accuracy, and, and it looks like there are times when our metering accuracy doesn't doesn't coincide with the, either the power we bought or the gas we bought or the water we produced. And, and I think right now we're making the move, and, and the mayor's, uh, got the, the meter department coming down to the public works building where we can start looking at these things a little bit more together and you know we may be looking at a, a, a meter change out program to make sure that we're able to meter everything properly right now the Grand Hotel meter doesn't even work we're just building them on a monthly fee based on what their usage used to be mm -hmm. I mean, we just need to be better than that. Tell us. That's what we're here for. Well, I just did. <laughs> so, anyway, you got any questions? I hope this wasn't like this when we paid for the sewer study. That's private property. Well, right. we, we didn't That's pay for them to assess the sewer system. We paid to them assess the amount of connections that are on the line and how much pumping capacity we have available to transport it based on a lot of information we gave them. A lot of this work will be done in the field with this team that will be part of the city. 
I mean, it's it's going to be a constant forever. Um, yeah, it's no quick fix. It's, it's, a, it's a continuous maintenance effort. And, and we'll still have overflows, by the way. Right. I mean, there's, there's some things you cannot avoid. We're relying on electrical, mechanical. But what was the overflow the recent spill caused by? It was just it was a rain. Just rainwater? It wasn't like oh. a power failure or a lift no. station failure, right? Inflow. Okay, it was inflow. Right. And, and you know, we've got 65 <laughs> lift stations. If we, if we had this uh, engineering department, they could take each rain event and they could look at specific <coughs> lift stations at, at how how fast the wet wells increased in level, how often both pumps ran, and they can start directing this assessment team to locations where we see problems. And, and that could be a team effort to get that done, and we can do it a little bit more cost effectively, and we can do it more efficiently. That's, it, it takes all of that to be able to accomplish what we need to accomplish. We'd approve some funds for some 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 sewer pipe rehab. Right. Uh, was that uh, was that area included in that rehab? Do you happen to recall? That that's the area we did there? rehab. And the, and we the Valley lined, Street. Yeah. You re and you we lined about three miles of potentially five or six miles of sewer main out there. So all of the all of the uh, contracts that we did were fulfilled. Is that correct? Any extensions? Is in that basin that we just experienced the overflow in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they rehab the, the the system and we had an influx, what where where did it come where did it come from? No, they come from manholes. We didn't do any manhole lining, and 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 one thing that that. Jay and, and Dan are doing now is identifying specific manholes. When you look at the manhole picture in that sheet, you'll see the steps are, are grouted into a, a, a brick manhole. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the grout system, because of the, the, the hydrogen sulfide and, and sulfuric acid, eats away at the mortar. And, you know, you, you can get leaks in those manholes as well. And so we're going to fix those, but, but we're going to also line some of the manholes where these force mains terminate into them. And, and that's the first phase of this annual repair contract that, that we do have. The second phase, I was hoping we could get the, the video assessment sooner than later, and we could maybe look at some of the more critical areas and, and, and get the, the best bang for that buck, you know, and I think we've talked about that. All right. I mean, it's a lot of work. It is. Yeah. And, and it's not going to go away. I've got a question. Now that we've discussed all this, and short of what's on the agenda for tonight, that hopefully we can get approved, what do you need from us to, for, to keep going with this? I need to know that we have the financing in place to secure contracts with, whether it be consultants or contractors, to get this work done. When you say in place, in the bank or... Telling you we, we can come up with it, or that's, that was the the, the reason you, we can do a bond issue is because you can you can get those funds uh, as dispersed as you need them. Right. I don't I mean, think you could do a line of credit. A line of credit that right. had a three-year draw right. and a seven-year repay, and then you're not just throwing money at interest, and you just that's right. Draw it up as you and you fund what you that's can kind out of plan profit, out of profit. Is we need uh, to just show that. How I've that asked uh, Mike also to do a presentation on reserves. You know what, what all of the bank accounts have, what they're restricted for, and all of those That'd details, because be there's a lot of them, and I don't even know them all. Yeah, that'd be great. Know? And and I know that we can pull from that and from the profits. Like I said, they are conservatively there. Right. Well, the way I look at it is, you know, from 2012 to 2016, we paid off. $20 million in debt, and that includes the $5.75 million we right. borrowed. So we really paid off almost $26 million right. worth of debt. Now, that does include schedule payments, so that wasn't the additional. But it was, if we had the capacity to pay off that much debt, and our debt, especially in our, in our government, is almost eliminated, I don't know why we couldn't do the same with infrastructure. Totally agree. Yeah, and just, uh, keep in mind, too, now, we've got an upwelling just yeah. outside the, the shoreline of Mobile Bay directly over our outfall line. And, and we're going to die test that, and we're going to find out if that's, in fact, a, a breach in our outfall line. And if it is, uh, I just saw the Biola Battery uh, yeah. request for extending their outfall line. Like that's part of their proposal, from one mile like to 
five miles. I mean, it was and significant. I said, why I mean, don't you, we go out further? And so, so you know, when you look at what these costs that we may be looking at can add up to, it's significant. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we looked at maybe putting a, a, a wastewater plant toward the, the Quail Creek area so we could use that effluent for watering the golf course and maybe doing something with the Auburn Experimental Station. What we're doing Saving also some of our groundwater. with that is taking the 10 million that has been gone through the approval process for restore funds and reworking it so it, I mean there's a lot to it but reworking and it so it can include looking at another plant and getting the new development nowhere near the trying bay. to maintain a, a transmission system that takes those possibilities into account you know is, is a balancing act in itself looking at uh, a potential decentralized sewer system at the airport property would, would I think there's been discussions about the airport property the city paying for it and maybe we can have people who hook up to sewer pay for it by having a decentralized sewer plant out there and uh, that that's a real possibility we're we're looking at some of those options uh, I don't know how open y'all are to that I'm willing to listen that's been discussed for years and years there on the south side of Bishop Road in that section of land. A decentralized sewer system? <clears throat> yep. Okay. Have there been any plans some, drawn some, up for that? Well, no, I'd just say it's been discussed. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> technical aspects of it. It saved me some time if there was one. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's gone that far. Okay. I mean, we did, I just want y'all to know we've got a lot of work to do, and, and it's not going away. And there's a, you know, a skeleton crew trying to get it done, and they're working their, their fannies off. And I hope y'all respect that. We do. Okay. All right. Anything else? Anything else? How's my tank doing? Oh yeah, how's the water tank? They're, they're doing the inside. Where and you know, when we upgraded the uh, design requirement on the containment system, the, the containment system that was submitted, we, we, we're second guessing some of the the, the allowable the, the the movement of that containment system if there happens to be a northwest wind blowing exactly where the substation is away from the tank you know we, we're making sure they go back and and the numbers are, are satisfying us that we're not going to have any problems with the 20 knot wind because it's designed for a 25 mile an hour wind and they're, they're coming back with some uh, hopefully some extra reinforcement but the inside of the bowl is being painted sandblasted now any uh i, I it's just i kind of ironic you brought that up i had a phone call from someone today asking about that and you know they're, they're, well there's a lot of people complaining about their cell phone service and the city's getting blamed and i just say mm -hmm. well we have to paint the water yeah. tank and you know I, I also went through there and i'm kind of saying this for the people in the audience too is that we were required to give them a 180 day mm -hmm. notice and it used to be a lot less notice. Do you remember what that used to be, Lisa? 30 days or 60 days or something? Well, they, they, they wanted in a new contract, and they really fought hard for us to put in 180 days because they needed to get their subs out there to take the antennas off the water tower. So we gave them the 180-day notice. Well, they, like, got those antennas down almost immediately. Um, so they were, they were so efficient, they took them down, and so they've been down for quite a while. Yeah, they were about a month ahead of schedule, really, because they had to stagger each other. The first one out happened to be the one that has the worst service for everybody now, so, you know, the, the, the last right. ones out didn't have that much of an issue, but that's the way it worked out, and I, and I hate that, too. It's a necessary evil. It's, it's just something you know, that happened. They'll be back, put back up just but as soon as making the power we're, we're, uh, Hopefully they'll finish. What, what's that estimated I'll, time of completion on that? Uh, it's 180 days from November 14th, I think. The, 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 the one problem they are having is the background check criteria that we have. And I don't know how, how and Kevin, you may be familiar with this, because when you get people that want to climb a tank and paint it, <laughs> they, they, they live on the edge. And finding people that may pass what we consider to be the acceptable background levels you know, sometimes they're not going to make the cut. The only thing I can tell you about that is I was standing on a job where they had to check some netting out if it would hold the weight. So they were told they had to take up sandbags. The guy said they ain't taking up sandbags. They just bail off. 
<laughs> into the netting. It held them, no problem. But that's the mentality you deal with. Yeah. And so, but anyway, I mean, and that's it, a fact. That is a true story. And now, the background <laughs> check, I understand. If, if that tank is full of water and we have people on there and then there's an opportunity to, to jeopardize the water, I understand that. But this tank is empty and, and everything that's, that's control equipment for the cell phone towers is wrapped up and taped up. And I mean, if, there, if there's an opportunity to relax that, that, that and if y'all would allow us to work with the chief and the police department in that regard we may come up with some second tier level so we have the supply the the subs have to have yes every employee that works on that site has to have a background check and, and it's hard and, and i'm quoting the contractor now i'm not <laughs> no he's absolutely right that in fact of uh i mean it's a different personnel you awake so far thought on that on the water tower? No, on the relaxing personnel. those requirements. That's a I tough mean, one. I mean, you're talking about like relaxing things like being able to pass a drug test and then somebody no, falls no, off the... No, that's not, that's not our response. That's okay. a contract response. But I'm talking about maybe a, a, a convicted felon <laughs> versus a misdemeanor charge. Yeah, but do we have those in place because our insurance requires something that like I that? Now that I don't know. I, I, mean, I, I, I don't know that that's something that we can do on our own without going that's to the to make sure that that's not that eliminating take some more coverage that we looking have. into than it would to, to paint the tower. I don't, I don't know. Well, I'm just saying that they could probably have another crew working and getting twice as much done if <laughs> they had the available people in their labor pool to do it with. Uh oh, here comes the chief. I can answer that question for you. Good. I've been dealing with it ever since 9 11. And they, Homeland Security, asked us to come up with a set of guidelines and they gave us some recommendations on people that can go into the power plant, any of these things, water wells, all of these things. And so basically, they have to come into the police department. We run a background check on them. We don't want, we've had uh, convicted murderers want to go into the water tank. That's the felon I'm talking about. Yeah, and and <laughs> it's things, I, I, I went out, me and a couple officers a few years ago, and it, it, it's some things that really need to be secured at the water, and I'll make you a list uh, at the water tank, because um, that's why the signs are on if you go down and you pass by the electrical places and the water plants and different places we have, that's why we have the signs on there. And so basically, it's just like any other job. You need to do a background check. And you, I, I, I do realize, because I used to climb up high. And now, about 20 feet is about as high as I'm gonna get. And so you do have some people that can't get a regular job that does these jobs and stuff. And, and it's, it's not fun when they come and I have to come out of my office, I step and have to come out of the office and tell them, sorry, you can't go in. And we, we didn't fought this battle for a while, so it's just a safety issue. And this is something that came down from Homeland Security right after 9-11. Yeah, and the only point I would make chief in that is, does it apply to a dry water tank that's being maintained? I'll, I'll come and get with you in the morning and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you. That's why sometimes things don't make it on the agenda. <laughs> we go out and seek answers like that, and we find out right. we can't put it on there. Okay. Anything else? Uh, any other questions for Mr. Peterson? No. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate you. That was the uh, infrastructure discussion it coupled with that, right? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yeah, I think yeah. we yeah. Okay, I didn't get that to number three there. I hope that was number three. Committee updates, Mr. Robinson, Mr. Boone. Well, we had a Harbor Board meeting last yesterday, and I thought it went very well. And I think Drew and Lynn did a very nice job presenting the uh, plat and the uh, plans for the uh, properties that we have. There's some discussion with it through the Harbor Board right now, and but overall, I think it was a very nice uh, system, and I think it'll work out very, very well. Are we getting close to an RFQ on the boat yard? You know, the the engineers did state that what we do have there can be repaired until we do do a final 
in the, in the future we're probably going to re replace it but right now it can be done be repaired to within the tonnage that it had you been about the landing for it. the landing right. for the, the landing machine to walk out over with right. it supported by peers yeah. uh, the engineer did do a study on that and they felt that they can be repaired to where it can stand up to 30 tons or I say 30 tons I'm assuming 24 tons or 30 ton, 24 tons which was what they did have and able to uh, reuse it at that capability and once that's done then the uh, prospective uh, boat uh, gentleman will be able to know what he can use and, what, and it is available for use. For example, if uh, the leaseholder wants to do, use a forklift, well, there's a different kind of support that needs to be done. Right. But that would be his responsibility. Right. He will get it so that he can bring in a 24 ton travel lift. Okay. And work it so we're not going to prepare the bulkhead to hold the, uh, the forklift if they want to use a forklift? That, that would be their responsibility. Just to me. I mean, I never see the travel lifts. I know that that's required for sailboats, but I always see the, the forklifts. But I guess, I don't know, if they're hauling them out, they see uh, more of a travel lift. So, anyway, uh, any other reports? That's it. Councilman Brown? Yeah, the uh, Financial Advisory Committee is close to making a decision uh, to report to the council whether it makes sense to reduce the police jurisdiction financially. The uh, bike ped. Committee is revisiting the complete streets implementation where where we left off and what steps need to be taken next. They also want me to remind everyone that there is a free bike valet for the arts and crafts behind the museum. And the uh, EAC is continuing to research the different variables for the special tax district uh, as well as next meeting we'll be voting on their recommendation for their 350000 for the 2018 budget. Councilman Conyers? Yes, I've got a few. Um, Historic Preservation Committee uh, drafted a, a white sheet making the case for historic preservation, and I've circulated that among uh, council and to the mayor this, this afternoon. Um, Environmental Advisory Board um, had something we were hoping to get on the agenda. The agenda is obviously extremely long, so we'll be looking for that in a couple of weeks. And then the Library Board, um, they, they have a library calculator that is used to try to quantify the value of the services provided by the library since the library is free. Um, this is sort of just a, a breakdown to show you what, what value the library puts out. The library's funding budget is about 815000 a year. Um, the total value of services provided by the Fairhead Public Library, $8.55 million. So they are uh, checking out a lot of books. Hey, 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 that's what I'll say, Jimmy. <laughs> but that's that's a pretty good return on investment, I would say. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Um, Ms. Mazur, do you have a report? Okay. I Can stole I your thunder? Sorry? I stole your thunder? You did. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, do you have another report to give? Do you have anything else to update the council on? Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, come, come forward, please. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. That's all right. I didn't realize we had rolled over into uh, department head reports. Uh, uh, just a couple of things. One, uh, I'm going to try to be bringing forth to the next work session. Um, as you know, in the budget, y'all had uh, appropriated some monies for street resurfacings as well as some drainage work, and uh, we are quantifying those and are going to make a recommendation of how far we think we can stretch that money. The, the piers, the wooden piers, are coming along nicely. Uh, they uh, just really got Orange Street left to finish. Uh, you know, one thing, we did have more pylons that had to be replaced or repaired than, than initially anticipated, but uh, that's kind of part of the part of getting out there and working on it. Um, and one of the things uh, just kind of excited about, and, and I hopefully Councilman Brown has shared with you, we're, uh, we're going to try to incorporate one of the recommendations uh, as kind of a test bed for uh, some rearrangement of parking. It will net the same number of parking places, but uh, we're going to be developing a plan for some reverse angle parking on Johnson uh, there between Bancroft and Section. And uh, the beauty about it is that uh, uh, it, it is becoming a, a highly recommended uh, parking system within uh, 
compact and intense use uh, business uh, districts. And the nice thing is when you're ready to depart, you have a very clear view of what you are departing into. And for our bicycle riders, you're, they're able to be seen before the car leaves it. So we're excited about that. And, and we're going to do a little uh, publicity campaign and, and, and get some signage up coming soon, how to use and that kind of thing. And we're going to do all that with in-house forces. So it's going to be a very minimal cost. And at the end of the day, if it turns out to be an experiment that doesn't work, we'll just paint them out and put them back like they were. But I think it's going to really, really work well for us. So we're working on a lot of things and appreciate y'all's support on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Tom? I don't have anything. Okay, it's hard to see you all now. Chief Ellis? Yes, sir, just two quick things. Um, in January, the fire department ran 109 calls, so we're starting the year off really busy. Um, February has been a little slower, and hopefully it stays that way for the year. And also, uh, the fire department applied for a assistance firefighters grant uh, to update our air packs. That award, uh, it's, they start awarding those in March and go to uh, March of 2019, but uh, we did apply for something, so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully we get it. Okay, thank you. And Sherry Lee, I saw her over here on the right. I'm, he's there, uh, do you have a report? You need to come, come forward, please. sit because I have to pass this out the spreadsheet y'all that you've been promised so this is just it just kind of gives you an overview of what we have going on um, thank you right now there's a lot as you can see and there are others in the pipeline just that we're exploring I mean they're not at even the LOI stage yet so they're not on this yet but they will be added but I think we can use this as a regular report so we can kind of keep up with where we are um, we do need to total some of these don't have uh, matching funds involved they're in-kind contributions so we're obviously not counting those as cash but you can just kind of look at what's in the pipeline here. Okay. And I'm not sure if Lynn updated y'all. Okay. So we did we did also receive the oh sorry, Lynn, the uh, Clean Vessel Act, the pump out grant. And what's good about that one, you'll see the do you remember the technical assistance grant we got to help with the design and layout of the marina which we don't have anything to bring to you yet to give input to because I know we did discuss doing that but the um, <coughs> technical advisors that were part of that were the ones that also helped us um, identify the pump out grant and they will continue um, out of that process to help identify other opportunities for the marina so you know sometimes when we identify these these grants for in-kind services and technical assistance it's not just to help us with a design or an actual end result of a project but it's also to help us um, on a strategy to identify other grant opportunities to implement some things needed for any particular project out of that grant also came someone who will, is working with us to put together a tourism a nature tourism plan so an environmental plan for tourism and that's all again we don't have to pay for any of that and that's on here too um, the only other thing I would just bring up and it's we're not even close to being there yet is there is we did just get a notice for hazard mitigation funding opportunity through the county we have no idea we have to look at our uh, Eric and I were just talking about it yeah literally just found about out about it mm -hmm. exactly so we'll look at our it has to be we have to apply for something that is already in our accepted hazard mitigation plan so as soon as we find out a little bit more about that 
will decide you know what's the, what's the priority and what we'll apply for I think the total amount they have is a little over 800,000 for the whole county but I think we have a good shot at getting a chunk of that so we will definitely pursue it I'd like to pursue it and that there's no match in that okay we like free money that's our favorite kind any questions for Sherry Lynn uh, restore act and what's the the status on those right now kind of impending right let mayor give an update um we should be voting um this month at the latest next month okay. our projects have moved along okay. I, have a, I have a question yes. with all these grants are there any stipulations that go along with these grants other than use the money for the intended use that the government may or may not throw into this it depends on the grant um I mean we try not to I try not to go after any of those like we had one on the agenda for tonight which we asked to pull because it did require a hundred percent match and we just didn't think it was it was worth it I mean it's not that's not easy money when, well it's short of these high we management. have to contribute yeah. into the in-kind services or the money that we contribute into there's no stipulations there that require us to do other things that get the grant that could cost the city money I can we you always talk you know free money is great but a lot right. of times it's kind of the Christmas gift that just keeps on giving right. and you have to keep spending money well, from the city we, side of it we really never know that when we we're only our, going after things that are on a list of priorities mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying so we're there's a lot we're not going after right I give, I give you a couple examples uh, NRCS Mercy Watershed which we've used before comes with a stipulation that for five years regardless whether it was in a public infrastructure private infrastructure whatever for five years the grantee is obligated to maintain it after five years that goes away so that's one of those that at least has a, a string that gets cut right. after a period of time right the recreational trails program one thing it says is that it, it that that if you build that trail in a recreation area that that if you ever sell that property and it stops being used for public recreation then they have a right to demand back their money right. and, and that's one of that, that that agreement that you would if we got a grant such as that that you would review and approve use it's a safe bet I don't think we're ever going to sell the municipal peer property or anything like that so so those things are generally not strings that that that, that concern you but uh, we always watch out for that uh, but usually it's either a maintenance clause or a use clause as long as the use remains the same then then, it, then it's good so those are the two I could think of right there and that, I, that I would say that you know tap grant is similar I mean of course we take over the maintenance of a sidewalk but it's a sidewalk that's been identified as a priority in the city so even the tap grants that are in progress now that came on board before we were hired um, like Manly for example I mean we will have to maintain that so I mean you I guess you could call that another you know string attached to it but long-term maintenance but anything that we're looking at and we bring forward to you all to consider into the financial advisory committee is these are things that the city needs to address you know stormwater and things like that so right. it that i do consider free money because otherwise we'd be paying all of it right um and that's that's kind oh, of the holy grail actually that question stimulated from the fact that i read an article mm -hmm. a while back where a group had got a transportation grant for busing similar to what we're looking at, not so much for the buses, but for the transportation part. Mm -hmm. And they were required to buy buses. Right. Because of it. Right. And you had to maintain the buses, keep the buses. And I think, well, that would be a kind of a nice argument to have when you're discussing it as opposed to getting the grant yeah. and then say, oh, by the way. And, and that's I, the kind of things I'm talking about. I assure you we're on the same page. Right. <laughs> we're looking for that, too. Well, we, are, we are about out of time. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, questions or comments I, I appreciate this this is a list that I believe we were looking for yes. thank you okay. and uh, anybody have any closing comments we gonna yeah, I mean it shows adjourn. if I'm correct about 700,000 that we're committed to yeah committed to and matching funds cash so that was what I wanted to see yeah okay all right council let's adjourn we'll start the regular council meeting in about hopefully in four or five minutes really,